What would you think if I told you that there was a little foam house that was quick to build, cheap to build, required no special foam cutting tools, and lastly was the easiest house that I have ever personally made. Well, if you've never made a house before or you're looking for a quick set of houses that you can bang out in one weekend to have a full table's worth of village terrain, then let me tell you, this is the video for you. channel everybody my name is Garmin this is the Storycraft Society and over the last few weeks my wife and I have been super sick with an illness that rhymes with Movid and uh, it kicked our butts but one thing that was really cool out of that experience is I literally fever crafted this building. It's a very like desert style, super square building. If I'm gonna be just completely and bluntly honest I don't remember crafting hardly any of it. I was in a delirium and this was the end result. And what I stumbled into was that this building is something that anyone could do. They could do it with relatively inexpensive tools and almost no money in materials. And most importantly, if you've never made a little foam building before, this is like an ideal place to start because let me tell you that this is the, the end point of this video. Anybody can do this. So. We're gonna dive into it. I'm gonna make two different versions kind of at the same time. I'll probably only show the steps on one, but anyway, let's dive down to the table and I'll start showing you how to get started with this. So the basic crafting material that I used to make all of the pieces of that building is this dollar store foam core. If you are unfamiliar with it, it is this stuff called ready board and what it has is peelable paper. It has peelable paper, XPS foam down underneath, but you're able to get this stuff from the dollar store and I think it's just like a dollar or something a sheet, at least in my area. The reason I like this stuff is because it makes it really easy. It's basically the right thickness for the walls of the building and that makes it very, very, very quick to do stuff with. So the first thing that we need to do is start building out walls. So I'm gonna give you measurements on what I'm gonna be doing for this. Any long-term viewer of the channel knows I don't like giving out measurements because the whole point is that you should be able to sight line it and learn how to scale the things yourself. But because of last week's video, I wanna show off the exact changes in scale that I made so it's comparable with this building. So the first thing that I'm going to do is get out a ruler and my X-Acto knife. Now to make the walls, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this to an inch and three quarters. That's going to be my height. And then once I have those done, then my width for this particular example is gonna be three inches. Now you could obviously make whatever size you would like to make. Now with those done, it's gonna look like this. And then I'm gonna pull out my tin foil ball. This is gonna be for my stucco texture and I'm just going to push that over top of the whole thing. Anybody who is a long-term crafter, this is nothing fresh and exciting, but for those of you that this is maybe your first time building a building or following along with one of these tutorials, this is like genius level crafting stuff where it seems like too good to be true, right? Like this shouldn't be able to make as cool of a texture as it ends up actually making. And then wabam, I'm going to craft a whole bunch of these. Now I'm gonna be using these throughout basically like this whole tutorial, but these are all the exact same size. And again, if you wanna follow along with exactly what I'm doing, I made 12 of these. Now, if you're only making one of the little buildings, you're only going to need four. So I'm gonna separate those off to the side here, and now we have our four walls. One thing that I will say about this tutorial is there's gonna be a lot of things that you could do that will upgrade from this super, super basic version, even stuff that I did with this building, but I'm not gonna show you those because like I said, I want this to be super user-friendly and get you into crafting something like this fast. So if you wanna see stuff on how I did, like maybe like the door or other super fancy things, that will be on other videos on the channel if you wanna go back and check those out or like if you're really passionate about it, leave a comment down below and ask me to make a tutorial on something specific you wanna see. Now what we need to do is we need to get these to be a little bit more specific of what we're looking for for walls. So set three of these off to the side and what we're gonna do is make the door in 
this section here. I'm going to pull out my pencil and I'm going to pull out my ruler. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make the door an inch wide. That's just a good measurement that I have found for doors. I'm just gonna line that up with my ruler here and then find the place where I want the door to start and make two little marks at the bottom. Well, as a bozo, I didn't have it fully on camera, but I made two marks about an inch wide. Then what I want is the height of the door to be just a little bit lower than the top here. So I actually, am, I'm not even gonna measure this out. I'm just gonna take and put a mark like here. Now, you've got options. You could make a square door or you could make a circular topped door. Um, for me, I think I'm gonna make a circular topped door. So the way that I do that is I will just come in here and start to kind of sketch out the shape that I want. You don't even have to be perfect with it. You just have to sketch out something that looks good to your eye. It doesn't need to be any more complicated than that. And then once you have that, then you can take your ruler and you can make those lines straight. With that done, then what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to connect the last little bit of these lines and there I've got my door shape and then next I'm going to cut that out. Now a fun little tip that if you're going to be making multiples, you can actually take this and use it as a template for your other doors so you don't have to spend all that time like sketching it out. And then now you end up with like that relatively close door shape and because you're gonna be using an X-Acto knife to cut it out, it's not gonna end up being the exact same shape as this one, so it won't look necessarily manufactured. That's a fun little like trick tip there. Now that I have that done, I'm going to pull out another tin foil tool. This is just kind of rolled up and made long, but I'm gonna use that to texture the inside of the door frame. This isn't necessarily a you must do it type of move, but I like to just have that little extra bit of texture. With that done, you'll notice this is flimsy as all heck, plus you can see through that. So what I'm going to need to do now is I'm gonna need to get another piece of this stuff and make a backing for it, and that's going to be what ends up blocking that space. You're gonna end up having scraps like this, which is the stuff that I cut off of the end, and that ends up making a perfect little piece like that. So the way that I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna pull out my hot glue gun. I'm going to put hot glue across the back of this and then just take this little piece, and set it in like that. And now there is our door jam for this particular piece. Now when it comes to doing the windows, I'm gonna handle them the exact same way, except just on a smaller scale, right? Like I don't need quite as large of a piece. Another little trick, if this is your first time, is use a miniature to try and figure out about the height of the window that you want. I just, you know, use that for scale to figure out where the bottom of the window was, and then that will tell me exactly or at least a good enough proximity of where to put the window. The last thing that I'm gonna talk about in this particular stage before we get to the assembling of this thing is gonna be, if you notice, sometimes these pieces can be flimsy. And the bigger, you know, obviously longer you make these wall pieces, the more flimsy they are. So one little quick solution that I like is to pull out my hot glue gun and what I can do is run beads of hot glue down the back of the piece and these work like structural integrity pieces. I'm just gonna do like a crosshatch pattern here. And now that's gonna take a second to dry. Movie magic. Now it is all dry and it is noticeably more solid. The thing to remember with this is, is that the thicker that you make the back supports in hot glue, the stronger obviously the piece is going to be, but also the more glue you're gonna waste. So if you are really trying to conserve materials, you maybe don't even want to do this because it's not 100% necessary. There's things we're gonna do later that are gonna strengthen the whole thing up by way of using Mod Podge, but if you just want something that feels a little bit extra sturdy, this is the way to go. One quick thing that I forgot to mention about the windows is that if you are going to make windows, don't overdo it. Like don't put a window, 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 window. I really like the idea of one or two of your wall panels on a four-walled building. 
I feel like should be just totally blank. It won't look very good in this particular stage, but it will look really good once you get into actually painting things up because it's going to have some kind of texture that you want to be able to see. Now let's move on to the fun stuff, which is getting these all put together. So this is, again, like a very, very easy, easy step. So what we're going to do, get out our hot glue. We're going to run a bead of glue down the side here. That is going to get pushed in to the corner like that. Then what I like to do is I like to set it down so that it will stand up on its own. The hot glue dries really quick, so that should be easy to do. And now what's nice about that is that you can make sure you get it all lined up so that it's nice and straight. And by this point, it's good to go. With that all glued up, this is what we have. And again, to get to this stage is pretty quick and pretty simple. And it's not a skill that I think that any experienced crafter lacks and a new crafter should be able to very quickly figure all of this stuff out to get to this stage. The next thing that we've got to do is get our top onto the piece. This is simple. I just took and cut out a, you know, square the size of the top of my building. And what I'm gonna do is glue that down so that you end up with this situation here. What's nice is that adds a little bit of rigidity to the building like this. And now you can see that our piece is almost fully into the shape that it is going to be. One last thing that I would like to mention about these two buildings that I was kind of crafting in the background is you actually can look at this one and notice I do not have a door on it. That's because these are not two buildings, but this is going to be an upper floor of this building. And the thing that I really like about this particular building model to make buildings is that you could quickly turn out a bunch of little single story buildings or by making them the exact same way, you can make it into a double story building. And all I'm gonna do is throw hot glue on here. And now we have a piece that is either a one story or a two story, depending on what kind of visual look you'd like to go for. Now the next thing that you're probably going to notice is we have these ugly seams that exist all over the building and it kind of just looks like a block right now anyway so the way we're going to deal with that is we're going to take out this exact same stuff it's going to be the exact same foam core but what we're going to do is we're going to cut three eighths inch strips of it and then what we're going to do is texture those on the outside edges using our tin foil ball. And what this is gonna do is it's going to end up making our trim for us so that anywhere where you have these ugly lines, you can put this stuff and it will block it visually so that you won't be able to see it. Okay, so the first thing that I did is I put these horizontal pieces of trim up. The thing is, is that I added this little bit of edging cut off on the corners. The whole point of that is just to add a little bit of visual diversity and take a little bit away from the blockiness of the look of the building. But honestly, that's the type of thing where you can choose if this is your first building, whether you want to go into that level of detail. And that's not even me saying that those are that complicated to do. It's just that is another step that if you're already overwhelmed with building your first little house like this, maybe you hold off on that step until you get a little bit more comfortable. But that is up to each individual person. But those are going to cover our horizontal seams. Now for our vertical seams, I'm gonna take and just put those same strips in. And then the thing that I like to do for these is I like to leave a little bit of a gap. That way you can see a little bit of that underneath piece. And this is a really good visual where you can see where the line is. I basically just run this right down that line and that gets this kind of sort of pillar look, but the trim just, Again, it breaks up a little bit of that just pure boxiness. But that's it for the timbers. I am going to add one little other accent piece onto those and I will cover that right now. So I already cut out all of these little scraps for the windows and I can cut those down so that they don't look exactly like the windows that I had to make them look like this. And then that little piece can then go into my blank areas 
like that. And I'm not gonna claim that these make any major, major difference to the visual diversity of the building, but I mean, I already have all of the little windows cut out. So my thing is, is that it's very little effort to add just a little bit of visual diversity. And uh, every single side does not have to have one. I'm actually not gonna put them on this side because they would kind of block where the windows would be. But just every so often, drop one in, particularly on these flat panels. I feel like it really kind of makes the flat panels pop just a little bit more. Sometimes they can be a little bit longer, like this was actually cut out from a piece of the door. But again, another little piece of flair that if it's your first building, maybe you don't want to go into, but it's not that much work and you have them already cut out provided that you chose to do the windows. The final seam that we have to tackle is this ugly one on top. If I'm just gonna to be totally honest, that's the one that you're probably gonna see more than anything because people are gonna be looking down on top of it. But the way that I'm going to do that is we're gonna be running crenellations along this top edge. So let's jump into how I'm gonna do that. First thing that I had to do was I cut out a bunch of strips of foam core. So this is three quarters of an inch tall, and that's the first thing. The next thing that I'm gonna do is I'm going to texture this, which will get it again, looking not like just a flat piece of foam. And then from there, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut crenellations into it. Now, once you have this pattern kind of all figured out, that's great, because then you can just set it on to your piece like this, and you can mark it out with a pencil so that you can get all of the crenellations to be reasonably the same, but they're not gonna be exactly the same, which is a good thing for visual diversity, because once you cut this off here, like so, then it's not gonna be exactly perfect, but even more than that, then you're gonna take your tin foil and you're gonna smash all of those edges down on top and that's gonna lead to a ton of imperfections that will make two pieces look similar, but not exactly the same. The final pieces that I need to make is just a 7 8 of an inch tall little pillar piece like this and then that's just cut to be the same size as the thickness and those are going to run on the outside like that. I started by hot gluing the pieces on like that. That's gonna let me then glue this down onto there like that. And then if you notice, it covers up that nasty seam. And then that is going to look like that. And then what I'm gonna do is just continue around that outside edge until the top looks like this. And once we've got that point done, then these are ready for paint. Once I get my houses done, then the next thing I need to do is coat them in Black Magic Craft Base Coat. That's going to be a 50-50 mixture of black acrylic craft paint and matte Mod Podge. What this is going to do is it's going to add strength to all of the little fiddly bits, but also what it's going to do is it's going to give me my black undercoat. And then that is going to lead me on to painting. Now, I am not a master when it comes to painting. I honestly am very utilitarian when I do what I need to do. And the cool thing about these buildings is they don't require a whole crazy amount of work. So for my stucco pieces, what I'm going to do is three tones of tan. I'm going to start with a territorial beige, followed up by a khaki, and lastly I'll be using an antique white. The territorial beige goes on very, very, very watery. The khaki goes on with an overbrushing, and then the antique white is a dry brush over the top. The other colors that you're going to need if you're going to try to mimic my paint scheme is going to be burnt umber and a milk chocolate. That's going to go into the top areas here, that's gonna look like dirt. That gets just a little bit of difference from like the stucco on the walls to on top. And then the last thing that you're gonna need is just some generic matte black that's going to go in all of the doorways. So with that said, I'm going to click my fingers and they're gonna be painted. Okay, so now we have these painted. Now, I'm not going to claim that these are the greatest paint jobs in the world but they serve a job. And if it's your first house and your paint job looks like this, well, congratulations, your painting is as good as I am. And if not, just a little bit of practice will get you here. Honestly, what I did here is not 
that crazy to do. But with that said, let's jump back up to the big building and we'll see what they look like together. And there you have it. Now, a couple things worth mentioning comparing the ones that I just made on the channel here to the one that I made when I was sick. Obviously, there is scaling difference between the two. I think I fixed my issues with the scaling with these slightly smaller ones. I think that they look a lot better. But also, a thing that I'll mention about these, these are the simplest version of this that you can make. And that's a really cool thing because like I said, in the openings, I didn't put any kind of door in there so you could easily put a door in there. In this one, I made brick cutaways. That's gonna be something that you could add if you want to spice these little buildings up. You could add stairs and trap doors up on the top. Literally, your imagination is the only thing that is holding you back in working on these. I just wanted to showcase how, if you wanted to make them the simplest possible way that you could, how absolutely and ridiculously simple these little buildings are. And honestly, if you just make the single story one, you could knock out so many. And when I say so many, I mean so, so many in just a very, very short amount of time. But hopefully you enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed making it. If you did do all of the YouTube stuff, like, like this video, share this video with a friend that you think would enjoy it and subscribe to the channel. But with that said, that's all we've got. So until next week, I'll be seeing you.